Hola. Hello. Whoops. I better turn off my music. Although this is a great song. How's it going? What up, Jake? What part of Nebraska are you from? Let me see if... Check, check. Yeah. What part of Nebraska are you from, Jake? All right, I gotta turn the music off. Or at least pause it. Sure, I'll upgrade. All right. Hello, hello. I don't see any. Uh, huh. I got zero people on. That's weird. Huh. In Orlando today, a balmy 59 degrees. This is weird. I went live. Doesn't look like anything's working. I show zero people on. Here, I'm going to start. Start. Hey, Randy, I'm in the UK watching you while eating Chinese food. Hey, if you can hear this, put in I can hear this because I show that nobody is on here. So real quick just someone pop in the comments i show 35 watching okay that's weird for whatever reason it's not updating there we go now oh, some some comments are rolling in all right very cool david city i remember that i remember david city i want to th- i want to say maybe like in the playoffs we might be played david city how big is david city like how many people live in it I can hear this, Brian Meacham. It's just weird. I see nobody watching, which is weird. Greetings from Walter Reed. Greetings, Jeff. Hopefully you're working there and not a, a um, patient. All right. Jason Burkett says, all good. All right. Well, I guess um, I guess it's just wonky on my end. We're live, big dog. You're live. We're live. Goliath City. All right. Movie Junkie John. YouTube and their ads are so silly. They start an ad when live goes live. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. It's. I mean, I could say I don't want any ads on here. But I kind of have to have ads. I would love to do this for free. Unfortunately, I cannot. We got 62 watching. It's so bizarre. Or maybe it's in the settings or something. Mm-hmm. Virtual background, audio, guests. No. No. General, maybe. No. <clears throat> maybe it's in the. Um... Yeah. It doesn't matter. Anyway. Uh, maybe 2,500. Yeah. I think, I think we played David City in the playoffs because I'm from. Uh, blow my anonymity i i went to high school in geneva and uh it's about the same size so yeah for some reason david city sounds familiar smash the like button yeah you're welcome great channel thank you hey so we had a cool thing happen we um went over 170,000 subscribers today which is a big deal for me you don't want to see my gross chair back there. There we go. It's a big deal for us as a community, as a channel. That zero count happened with a friend stream last night. Yeah. My views. Zero. Zero. Congrats. Thank you, Michael Van Gelder. I appreciate that. My weem's all updated now. In the time that we've been chit-chatting, my weem updated. Tommy Morrison. Tom Morrison says, my content has been on point. Thank you. I think some people would disagree. I got something on my shirt. You know, it's funny. I get these shirts that turn out to be my favorites, and then inevitably, I get a stain on there. It might be, it might be toothpaste. Who knows? 
Kevin Garner says, yay, more subs. Yeah, 170 is like a big deal. I It, it wasn't like I kind of made a big deal out of, I think, 10,000, and then I made, made a big deal out of 25,000, and 50, and then 100, of course. 100 is like a huge deal. And I never really like thought about posting anything until, for whatever reason, like 170. Like 170 sounds way better than 160. Wellington, New Zealand. Wow. Thank you so much for watching. I remember watching you when you were at about 1,100 subs. Yes. There's a patron of mine um, who I think subscribed when I just had a couple of hundred. Crazy. Crazy. I never, I never would have dream, dreamt it. Never. It took me six weeks to get my first thousand subs. I had no idea what to expect after that. I mean, frankly, getting to a thousand subs in like six weeks was far exceeded my expectations. Madison, was Madison, Wisconsin. Very cool. You got a nice skit back there. I have a whole bunch of skit right here. Um, probably can't see it. So that's the Lear. And then you can't see this, but I have a Wien Pro. This is actually an Andover phono preamp that I've been listening to. You can't see it down here. But these are the new, I can't even pronounce these. Um, Gelardens. These are the new smaller amplifiers. And then I have a Loki right here, Lokius right here. Because I'm actually using the Lokius as a single-ended to XLR switcher, as well as an EQ, so that I can bridge these amps. So these are running mono. So I'm kind of like I'm trying to, um, as much of a skit system as I can, it pretty much is all, well, the, the DAC is the J2. Although I should probably get a Bifrost in here. And then back here is the tiers. But I didn't have any place to put those, so I just put them back up there. Orange, Texas. Hey there, from the Detroit area. Ha. Boston. You're over 120 watching right now. That's good. It makes me... I, I don't like that it's not showing up. Because... I don't know why. I always glance up there. Usually we get about 250 to 350. Detroit at any given time. I mean, concurrently. New Pioneer product. Call me interested. Yeah, you want to talk about that? We can talk about it. So there was a, um, I guess, press thing on Monday. And then there was, it's called an embargo. So we can't talk about it until a specific time. I was going to make a video, but I ended up making a video on um, the Magni Modi Loki mini stack, which incidentally has done really, really well. $5, Movie Junkie John. Thank you. Got an arcane back in from repair. Sounds great. Does Weem mini aux out to receiver sound as good as optical? No. <laughs> No, using topping E50 optical for movies instead. No, hook it up to your your E50. And if you only have one optical, I can't remember. Yeah, I think the E50 only has one optical. Um, you can do like a optical to coaxial switcher, or you can actually just get two a two into one optical. So you can go two opticals into one. But yeah. No, the Weem, you will really benefit from running the Weem into your E50, for sure. Um, favorite song, uh, most recent song, The Pretender, Jackson Brown. Scott enjoys watching all of my videos. Well, thank you. Um, let's talk about the Pioneer, though. So let me share my screen. Uh So, and this isn't really like hugely part this, this product is not really going to fit in with kind of the ethos of the channel because 
pretty expensive. And I'm not sure if I'll even get this in. But this is the VSX LX805. This is the drama shot. <laughs> um, so this is their top tier receiver. And I believe it has 11 channels. Pre-amp outs for all channels. There we go. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Uh, nope. Let's do this. Plus, 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 plus. All right. This may not be a good picture. Let me see if... There's just a straight on picture of the back. Left. Here we go. Nope. Wrong way. Why is it going the wrong way? I want it to command plus plus. All right. Command. All right. That's weird. I guess that's as big as it's going to get. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, that's more than eleven. Um, anyway, preamp outs for all the channels, which I think are cool. And then it's also got a balanced input and a single balanced output. And I believe all of the HDMI are HDMI two point one. If that is something you want to consider. Um, it is class AB, and it's pretty cool looking inside. Got two fans. But, you know, three grand is expensive. Now, if you're really into home theater, then, um, then maybe that's something you want to consider. The, <laughs> it's pronounced Yalar Horn. Okay, so I've got two Yalar Horns. Yalar horns. So yeah. Anyway, new Pioneer receiver. It's going to be available. I believe they said spring of this year. Spring of 2025. <laughs> Just kidding. 3K. Ouchies. Yeah, it's expensive. Um, it's got D rack. It's got a bunch of stuff. But yeah, three grand is no joke. No joke. <laughs> Monolith by Monoprice on sale for $4.99, 5.1 THX certified. What is that? Is that a receiver? I've heard. Okay. I'm... I probably shouldn't say. Return my Pioneer LX305 was buggy, unfortunately. Random shutdown and HDMI issues. Have an Akio NR17, uh, 7100 on the way. Fingers crossed. That's interesting. I actually have the LX305. And fortunately for me, it's never been buggy and I've never had HDMI issues, but I've had, I had a lot of HDMI issues on my Marantz NR1711. I think this is just part and parcel with receivers, unfortunately. But yes, HDMI issues can be challenging, frustrating. Onkyo Near, yeah, it's pretty much the same company. Um, I still think they have individual designers, though. They probably are se are selling. They're probably borrowing a lot of the same tech. So if Onkyo has something, then I'll probably borrow it. Uh, Emotiva or Emotive MC1 question mark. You're gonna have to be more specific. I, I don't actually know what that question means. There is an Emotiva MC1. Full of show. -all. It exists. Oh, would you rather go Emotiva? Ooh, Brian, that's a tough question. Um, personally, um, yes. Yes. I have the 305 and I love it. Running Dirac is sometimes, it sometimes, you have to run Dirac a couple of times. I think from a Sonic perspective, but here's the thing. If I was just watching movies and I didn't really do m much music through it, if they were the same price, 
all things created equal, they're the same price. I would consider the Pioneer over the Emotiva. But I don't get too, like, I don't care too much about all of the latest and greatest. I care about how it sounds. And since most of my listening is music, I think the I think the Emotiva sounds better to me than the 305. I haven't heard the 805 though. So the 805 class AB, they may have changed some things up. So it could sound spectacular. And with Dirac, I can get the 305 sounding very good. And then I can kind of just tweak it from there. So that's a tough question. Very tough question. At $3,000 though, you can start looking into separates from some companies but I, I think I would, I would assume that this this new eight hundred five is going to be spectacular. Michael Scott, <laughs> I've been watching a lot of The Office lately, so Michael Scott comes up a lot. I'm grateful for your insight and reviews. Thanks, Randy. Thank you. Hey, look who's here, Ed. What up, Ed G? Hit the like button, Ed. How many people do we have on right now? Because I can't see it on mine for whatever reason. That vexes me. Uh, when you can please get back to me with regards to hooking up and using my SAE parametric EQ, please. Scott, I am not um, IT, nor am I tech support. But I would love to help you out. And there is a lot of support in like my Facebook group as well as my Discord server. But generally speaking, I can't, I can't be tech support. Uh, for folks on here number one because oftentimes i don't have experience with that specific unit john shepler says 211 i want it to be 350 john can you make it 350 please (laughs) sorry bring back the wobbly table just for nostalgia it's in the garage i actually shot a video with it um the uh rsl video the unboxing which reminds me, I need to get some stuff out of there, which I'll do right after this. It's in there. And so I did that video on it. Uh, what have you done with your pretty new vintage amp? It's not in the background. I had to make room. So I wanted to put my turntable back there. So you can't see it, but I have another rack. So I have three racks in here. I have another rack over here that is kind of... It's kind of the stuff that I switch in and out. And then I have another shelf. So the shelf is where things don't necessarily go to die, but they're not being used very often. This big rack, it's a big, big rack, um, houses not only the Kenwood, but underneath it, the CR800 from Yamaha, which incidentally looks like a miniature receiver compared to the Kenwood. And then under that, I have an Emotiva XPA 2 channel. And then under that, I have the Akatika power amp. And then under that, I believe it's the Emotiva PT2 preamp. And then here is turntable, Duke Audio. And then I have the A1s from Emotiva over here. I got a lot of Emotiva stuff. Then the Schkit Tears. I have a Black Ice Audio thing. The Akatika preamp, Emotiva CD player, Oppo CD player, and then the Yamaha AS301. I need to revamp some stuff. For sure. For sure. Uh, Hey, Randy, Chad Z from Klipsch here. Hope to see you at Exponent next month. Are you really from Klipsch, Chad? And I will be at Exponent. Bo show. Did I meet you last year? Were you there last year? I um, I would love it to get more clips. I thought Klipsch was mad at me, maybe. Maybe I'm just making things up. But I want to get some more Klipsch stuff in. I actually want to get the new powered speaker in from Klipsch. Klipsch. All right, let's see if Chad responds. Um, Chad. 
Speaking of, when is the RSL review? I've been listening to the speakers for a while. So I think I'm ready to start to um, evaluate them, I guess. It's so, so silly. I think I'm ready to like start AB in them. So it's going to be soon. Soon, soon, soon. The nines. Yes. Yes. What do I say? Should get that way. Um, you know what? Somebody was really um, off put by the way that I say shkit. And the reason why I say it that way, Ty, is because I don't like to use profanity. And even though it's not technically profanity because it's spelled differently, like if my children heard me saying it, it they wouldn't know that it's not profanity. And so occasionally my kids will watch my content occasionally my kids friends parents will watch my content and i don't i choose not to use profanity and it may be silly to some people but that's the way i do it so i know it bothers people because it keeps coming up but that is the why that is the reason why i don't say that occasionally on like a zoom meeting i'll use some profanity but if it's going up on youtube almost never ever 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 i think i've slipped up a couple of times you're making things up. We love you. We'll have the nines and reference premiere subwoofers. Uh, awesome. Yay. Hey, I was on the press thing on um, Monday. No, Clip's not mad. I am making things up. I guess so. Uh, your show says notify still on notify page. It's weird. Let's continue the... I can never... I have the... I don't know. I know if stuff doesn't sell, they kill it. So that's just kind of how it works. If something sells, they keep it. If something doesn't sell, it goes away. Uh, where should I look for purchasing a decent record player? Um, well, I think U-Turn has great record players, turntables. Hold on just a second. It's going to be interesting. Hey, Wallace. What's up? I'm on a live stream right now. And guess who else is on a live stream right now? You are. Yeah. Dude, I feel honored. Yeah. I'm going to hang up on you now, okay? I've been on a live stream, and you mentioned me in your video, said I was your friend. <laughs> you are my friend. But seriously, I'm on a live stream, so I'm going to let you go. All right. I'm going to go look at it. All right. Bye. Jason Wallace, everybody. Uh, sorry about that. Skit equals skeet. Uh, yeah. So that's the reason why I don't say it. Oh, uh, record player. Uh, U-Turn has great ones. Very affordable. Fluence has really, really good, um, turntables. And then Project, um, Riga. There's a lot of great options out there. But the most of the experience I have is with I'm sorry. I forgot. Fluence. Fluence and U-turn. Yeah. And I've had um, a few uh, projects in. I like project. Project's good. This is a project right here. This is the Metallica turntable. So this was a splurge of mine. Uh, I figured I'm probably not alone with a decent. I tigger Ted that are curious about separates i'm not sure i follow that with a decent eye tegra ted that are curious about separates sorry oh integrated okay i figured i'm probably not the only decent integrated that are curious about separates yeah i you know if i have the option to go separates i usually do I generally have never gone separates on home theater because of space, because it just takes up a lot of space in like a rack or something. That's fine. But like my living room is not set up specifically for to accommodate separates. Although that rack may be going upstairs 
so that I can do that very thing. But I've got to kind of figure things out. I'm also thinking about finishing off a room that's above the garage that just needs to be drywalled and stuff. And then that will become, well, I won't call it a theater room. I won't call it a listening room, but all my filming recording and stuff is going to be done up there. And then it will be, I'll have stuff wired for surrounds, like a permanent surround installation. Michael Van Gelder says, I respect your choice and reason for your vocabulary. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Rob Hawk. $13.99 Canadian. Your lack of cuss words is greatly appreciated. Well, thank you. I just think, I mean, listen, I am, was a sailor. And there's a reason why they say cuss like a sailor. But I'm just not going to do it. I just, I may do it like if we're talking personally, but. I don't know. Not on my channel. Uh, word to go from Elac debut 6.2s as an upgrade. Thinking about B2 plus Sherwin Vega KLH model three. So I don't have any experience with the Sherwin Vega nor the KLH model three. I do have experience with the B2 plus and they are spectacular. The debut 6.2s. I love Andrew Jones and I love Elac, but that speaker was not the speaker for me. I think you should, <clears throat> excuse me, consider the B2 plus because that's the only one I know. And I would choose the B2 plus all day long over the 6.2s. But yeah, not sure about the Sherwin Vegas or the SL 28s. Not sure. Skylab's made a turntable tier list. Watch that. There you go. Project U-Turn Fluence, I'll have excellent reviews. Are we that far down? Holy cow, I've missed a lot of comments. All right. If you have a pre-out and power amp in your receiver or integrated amp, you can use that. Yes, most, most receivers don't have pre-amp outs. Skylabs, guys, Kevin. Yes, excellent channel. He's a uh, vintage... He has a vintage shop out of Des Moines, Iowa. I found a salamander rack that works great. I, th I was really excited because I thought you were just going to say I found a salamander. And then we would talk about like how you put it into a terrarium and you gave it bugs and then it grew to be your friend and you named it Sal. That's pretty cool. I'll have to check out the salamander rack. I have a buddy that has a salamander rack. He loves it. Chief Audio Man, your show says to notify on my favorite page, still showing you're not running live yet for folks. That is bizarre. How many people do we have watching? I don't know. That's weird. Let me open up a... Let me open up a YouTube. Here we go. That's weird, weird, weird. All right. I, you know, what's funny is I do this all the time and I'm still not great at this. It says I'm live. Um, whoops, the daisies. It says I'm live right now. Live viewers, 243. So it's weird. Sometimes things just don't sync up correctly because I'm doing this on a, not on YouTube. So this is on, it's called StreamYard, and it streams through YouTube. Hey, Randy, I just ordered Vista Audio Spark. Holy cow. I haven't heard about those for a while. Any speaker recommendations? $400, $600 range. I'm currently rocking the Sony SSCS 5s. Thanks. That's a lower powered integrated, but I mean, it just sounds spectacular. I think anything 88 dB or higher can sound great on there. It did not like the ELAC Unify UB5.2, the second gen U Unify. It couldn't, it couldn't handle those. But something that isn't super power hungry, ob obviously, I think don't put anything on there like 85 dB. Don't put like the Kef LS50s on there. But I think anything else is going to be just fine on it. I mean, I'm running these. The Wharfdale Denton. Oh, that's 
actually a really great recommendation. Wharfdale Denton, 80th. That would be a match made in heaven. I've got these, and I already forgot how to say it. Something Matterhorn. <laughs> Amps from shit. They're only 20 watts, and they're rocking the heck out of these Wharfdales. I I always forget, like, it's so funny. I'll talk about speakers and I will completely forget to include my favorite speaker when I'm talking about it. It never fails. And I think it's just because I'm using them so much that they just kind of, I don't even think about them. I love the Dentons. I love the Wharfdale Denton. They're just so pretty, too. Pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. All right. There we go. Put that back on. There we go. It's back in its place. I have a whole box full of speaker grills. I lose them. All right. Did I miss any super chance? No. That is YouTube. No notification notice and still showing up upcoming... It's weird. That's weird, weird, weird. All right. Just got that one. All right. Bunch of vinyl coming out on the 17th. Cool. I'll have to check that out. Well, what is today's date? It's the 15th. It's the 15th. Scarborough. Not. No fair here. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I'm going to have to say it over and over again. Yalar horn. Yalar horn. Yalar horn. Yalar horn. My mom says that. Yeah. And she's from Nebraska. But for whatever reason, there was kind of like that a bit of that kind of North Minnesota, Fargo ish, like North Dakota accent. So she'd always go, Yah. So Yalar horn. I bet you guys are really interested in my mom's weird accent. Uh, Randy, do you recommend using a power conditioner? So what brand model? Um, I will say yes, with a caveat. I don't necessarily. So I have, I have two. Actually, I have three. And I need a new chair, by the way. And this is a pro audio brand. I don't want to grab it because number one, I'll probably short something out. And number two, I'll probably unplug everything. I have mentioned it before on the channel. At one time, they're about 60 bucks and it's really like a beefy. I just kind of view it as a very beefy uh, power strip. It does have power conditioning in it or so they claim. And for 60 bucks, I was like, I'll just take the, um, I'll take the insurance. AudioQuest sent me a power conditioner and it's about, there's two versions of it. They sent me the big version, which is $300, but there's a $200 version that just has fewer plugs. And without getting into a huge debate on here, I thought it, I'll put it to you this way. I thought it was $200 well spent. And even if it was $300, if it was personally mine and I wasn't doing this channel, I'd probably still spend the 300 bucks on that. So the two audio quests, and then for whatever reason, I cannot, Furman, that's what it is, Furman. Furman power conditioner. Let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, let's go to Amazon. I got it off of Amazon. And I talked about them up and down when they were 60 bucks. But for some reason, they doubled in price. Okay, there looks like they're back down here. Let me share this. So this is it. See? December 6, 26, 2021. Um, 68 bucks. And this is about what I spent on it. 1900, 1900 positive reviews. But like I said, it is... I don't do it necessarily because of like I think it's going to be sonically way better. I'm going to put it I'm going to put it in the chat right here. 
I do it because it was cheap and beefy. And you can mount that in a rack if you want to. So anyway, yeah. Refresh your YouTube screen. I am really hesitant to do that. Oh, look, 249. Okay, it popped up now. I'm really hesitant to do that because this whole thing could go away if I refreshed it. But it's, it is showing me now how many people are in here. ASR decapitated a Panther for the Vista Audio Spark. Listen, ASR has a great um, site or form or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I know a lot of folks really love ASR. And I think that's great. Um, but personally, I mean, there's, I, I don't really look at ASR. But in like a year and a half ago, sometimes I would glance over at it and I, what I hear sometimes matches up with them saying something is good or bad, but um, not always. I like the spark. I think it's great. I think you got to kind of look at the spark though, as I'm not saying it's a tube amp, but it's kind of old school, discreet. It's a chip amp but it's not a class D amp it still has a toroid. So it's a class AB, but a lot of these, those times or a lot of, in those cases, like a tube amp's not going to measure well. Um, I don't think some of the uh, schkit stuff measures all that well, but it sure sounds good to me. So anyway, um, I think, but ASR is great. And I think if you are, um, in the audio, I think you definitely should check them out. Personally, for me, I don't really care about their opinion. That's just me. OB1. I use a large UPS for all my equipment power. I use a Furman rack mount for my studio gear. I still plug that UPS into a UPS. Yeah, I mean, if you can afford a UPS, get a UPS. But that's some bucks, generally speaking. You know what's funny is I used to work for Schneider Electric. And like the most popular, I think, well-known UPS that sold is a brand of Schneider Electric. Because I was looking into, I could have gotten a discount on them. It wasn't the division that I worked for. Um, Furman Power Condition, there you go. Uh, Randy, any awesome DAC for the phone that's Bluetooth? I would look at anything that has... LDAC on it, topping E50. So it's not just about like the Bluetooth, because you're, you're even though something has Bluetooth, it's still running through the DAC and it's still going to run through the analog output stage. So just having an LDAC enabled DAC is not going to guarantee that it's going to sound good. I think the E50 has LDAC. Uh, there was a there was one that I just did that had LDAC. It sounded pretty good. So yeah. E5. Um, you show as actively live when I checked. Very good. You know, it's funny is since it must have been updated or something, I see a lot more people in here now. Anyway, topping E50 is good. APC, that's what it is. Yeah. Torto power supply does not determine if it's class A, B, or class D. Well, the... Um, The what did we just talk about? Vista Audio Spark is class AB, but it has a chip that controls biasing. So most I haven't often seen a class D that uses a toroid for the transformer. Usually it's a switching power supply. That's just mine, but yeah, you're I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying in my experience, I haven't seen I don't think any class D amps that have a toroidal transformer for a power supply. Wow. I worked at Schneider electric in some Smyrna, Tennessee power logic. I worked for a small er. So the division that I worked for was a division within the division, but I don't know if you guys know what PLCs are. So, programmable logic controllers but i worked for a division that was within that division that sold low power 
low a uh, AI RTUs, which an RTU is kind of like remote terminal unit is kind of like a PLC, but it's like PLC light with not as many analog and digital in and out. And then I did stuff with SCADA. Very boring. Uh, oil and gas is the industry that I worked in. But yeah, it was PLC stuff. I'm using a Sabaj A10H headphone amp as a remote volume control in my vintage system. Great product with great reviews. Very nice. I don't know if I have that one. This is funny. I work at Schneider. <laughs> it's too funny. Yeah. Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Schneider Electric. Well, I mean, there's like 60,000 people that work for Schneider Electric. So chances are we'll run into, you know, some people from who I worked with from Schneider Electric and then also from like customers of mine found me on YouTube before I quit. Now, I didn't quit Schneider Electric. I went to work for a distributor that sold Schneider Electric. So I worked for Schneider for like, I don't know, six, seven years. And then I worked, went to work for a distributor rep that sold Schneider. And then I quit there. But the people that I knew as customers and one of the guys I knew from work found me. I'm like, is this you? I'm like, yeah, it's me. Schneider uses a, a skater radio. You might know some of our uh, GE oil and gas team. Uh, I, I could. Yeah, maybe. Snyder also had um, spread sp spread spectrum radios. It had licensed and unlicensed radios, like 900 megahertz radios. It's a company that was out of Australia. That was the brand Schneider Bottom. I can't remember. I can't remember. But GE radios were out there a lot. I tried to sell against them. <laughs> Does the A07 Pro control sub out through volume? I don't know. I don't have the A07 Pro. I would assume that it does. Almost all UPS units I've seen in IT have been APC. Yeah, we're we're judged, we're leaning into Schneider today. Uh, I just got my Endgame amp delivered today. The Moon River 404 reference. Very nice. Does the IEMA A07 with a 36 volt power supply? Power adapter, VSDC32, make a difference in power rating? Yes, absolutely. I mean, if you're coming from a 24-volt power supply, it depends on how, like, the amps on it. But most of the 24-volt power supplies have less than 5 amps. So if it's – all you have to do is multiply. So 24 times currents equals power, and then 36 times whatever the current is on that power supply equals power. If the 36-volt – power supply is greater then yes but yeah that ao7 can take up to 48 volts uh 10 amps actually how are you liking the new skit amps you know it's i like them but the problem is, is like it sounds good but i don't i need to compare it to stuff so what i'll need to do is like put another amp and then same source same preamp and everything and just do the amp switching back and forth and that's when i can really start to tell a difference on how just how good something is because most of the stuff i get in here that's all it's all good <laughs> it's all good until i've got to compare it though and that's the thing thing about youtube like any idiot can be on youtube and i'll tell you the reason why because the only thing i do is listen to something and then listen to something else and then talk about the differences that's it <laughs> anybody can do that um so yeah i encourage you guys and gals if you're on here ladies females, men, trees. Um, I encourage you all to start a YouTube channel. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Stephen Calvert, thanks. The A08 Pro is fantastic. I do love the A08 Pro. I think I have one over here. Yeah. So that rack also contains the stuff that I reference a lot. So AO8 Pro right here. Very nice. 
24 to 48 volts. Uh-huh. I love this thing. There is a Duke audio that I just reviewed that I think they're onto something if they tweak a few things. And um, oh my goodness, this is the best question I have seen all day. Let me finish this thought and then we'll go to this question because it's a very important one. Um, anyway, I think this kind of package with the VU tone controls, I think if they just kind of did some things, solidified it, and then built kind of a, a group of products within that price range or within that um, how they looked, kind of that styling – I think Aima, I think Duke would really be onto something. All right. The most important question of the day. In and out or Whataburger? This is a question that plagues me. It keeps me up at night. The only good thing about this question is that I can enjoy both. So it's a complicated question to answer. I think overall, I think Whataburger has the better front to back burger. However, in and out has a better cheese to meat ratio and much better onions than I think the Whataburger does. I think the Whataburger does a better job with more ingredients. However, I think in and out does a better job with more limited ingredients. And obviously it's smaller, but yeah, they're both spectacular. If there was an in and out closer to me, I probably would eat in and out more often than Whataburger, but my there, and there's one uh, about four or five miles from me. Probably not even that. It's probably like two miles from me. But I have to cross the interstate and it's a big pain. But both spectacular. Whataburgers are just huge too. Okay. Yeah. We got in and out Shake Shack. I don't know if I've been there. I've never had a Whataburger. They're spectacular. Neither. Uh, it took me 15 years to make it to an in and out burger. I, when I used to travel to California for work, I would eat every meal at in and out in and out all the way. Um, here we go. <laughs> I'm rocking uh Polk ES 15s based on your suggestion. Like them a lot. I want to try DIY route as far as base extension. How does the Tory kit compare to the ES 15s? Um, I, the Tory is way cleaner than the ES 15. If you want base extension, save up and get the Crichton. I mean, that thing hits 30 Hertz in room 30, 30. I think anechoic it's rated at 40 and will hit 30. Never had a water burger. Really good. Really, really good. Really good. Hey, Randy, would a preamp for my current configuration bring better sound? Gary, I don't know what your current configuration is. Um, and it depends on the preamp. Not all preamps sound the same. Some are much better than others. In and out. We got Shake Shack. Five Guys. You know, you go spend, like, one of my buddies, like, he went to Five Guys. Burger, fries, drink, $20. Now, even Whataburger is like $12 now, but still. And I also like the onion rings. That's one thing I forgot to mention about In-N-Out. Their fries are terrible. Absolutely terrible. To the point where it's almost an embarrassment that In-N-Out's fries are as bad as they actually are. Just terrible. All right, we got Smashburger for the win. Um, also, I think uh, honorable mention should go to we have a place called Muya here in town. Kincaid's as well, but Muya is pretty good. Shake Shack for the win. We don't have Shake Shacks over here. Culver is fantastic. Oh, we're talking burgers. Yes, we are. I'm getting hungry. Uh, I can go only, only go in and out for so long. I think that's what I love about having both Whataburger and in and out is that I can switch back and forth. 
if I'm hungry, like you get a double, double water burger with cheese, it is enormous. It'll fill you up. Sonic is good too. I don't think they're in the same realm as In and Out or Water Burger. Um, Brian's SOL. He doesn't have Water Burger or In and Out. Randy, that now you're experiencing a lot of equipment. Um, can you do a video regarding the cheap systems you could live with, i.e., desktop, small room, large room, multi channel? I think that'd be a great idea. I don't know multi channel if if that would really fit into it because I don't think like the affordable stuff really fits into multi channel unless you're using it as an amplifier from an AVR that has preamp outs. But at that point, you're not really cheap anymore. But I think that's a great idea. Can you circle back to what the new Pioneer product is for those like joining? Yes. The Pioneer is, it is a flagship receiver. The VSX805. VSXLX805. Here we go. Let me share my screen. Here we go. Uh, 150 watts, 11 channels. You do three zones with it. Um, I'll, I'll drop this into the. Um, I'll drop this into the chat. Command C. Command V. There we go. Okay. So y'all can check it out. Boop. All right, go away. There we go. So it should be in stock sometime in the spring. So all sorts of stuff. HDMI 2.1, Dirac Live. You can pay a little bit extra for the Dirac base management. Uh, phase control, lossless sound. Yeah, they got, oh, they, they also have Saber DAX in here, which is cool. And then preamp outs for everything. So yeah, there you go. That's the new product. <laughs> Hold on. I'm having fun talking about burgers. Uh, I'm on the wrong screen. There we go. Boop. In and out and R700 for the win. Mixture B. I like In and Out. I've never heard the R's or R700s. I would like to. Smash Burger is epics. Um, I'm in Europe. I don't know what this is about. We have Mac and King. Uh, it's it's cheeseburger. Fast food places, basically. Um, so, yeah. Fast food. Uh, have you tried the new... Oh, hold on. Yeah? Yeah? Larhorn. Yeah? Lar Did I get it right? Yeah, they're right. Actually, here. I don't know if you can see that. Whoop. They're right here. See? They're lit up and everything. Hold on. That's what I'm actually listening to. Or that's what's currently hooked up. Oh, Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? Here's an unpopular opinion. I don't like Chick-fil-A. My kids love it. Always have to go to Chick-fil-A. The only thing I like about Chick-fil-A is their vanilla shakes. I think it's bland. I mean, I do like the Chick-fil-A sauce. But I mean, I'd rather have KFC. I'd rather have Popeyes for sure than Chick-fil-A. I think Chick-fil-A is not good. And that is a very unpopular opinion. I get it. Most people love it. My kids love it. Their friends love it. Everybody loves Chick-fil-A. I don't like it. Here we go. Todd T. Weighing in on the very important cheeseburger <laughs> discussion. Whataburger patty melt is great. Completely agree. Plus, I love their spicy ketchup. Completely agree. Completely agree. Are you going to review the schkit? Ya yeah, lar horns? Yes, absolutely. They're right here. I can't review them like right now, though, because I've done so much content on Schkit. Plus, I've only really had them going for about a day or two. Yeah. I work next door to a Wendy's. It's usually gross. We have a Wendy's that's terrible. Oh, Steak and Shake. I love Steak and Shake. Um, steak and Shake and Five Guys is greater than in and out I love Steak and Shake. They're, they were a little bit too small for me. And it took too long, and all most all of the steak and shakes around here went out of sh went out of business. Uh, another vote for five guys. Does the IEMA T eight 
preamp pair well with the AO7 with the 36 volt power adapter. Um, well, I mean, I don't think you're really getting anything sonically, just more power. I think the T8, yeah, does a good job. Um, you may want to look at some other one. I mean, the Modi is about the same price. So unless you need, but if you need volume control and a remote and everything like that, then yeah, T8's good. It's really good. But there's also other DACs out there that are really good too. Uh, five Guys is super expensive. Yeah, I had a buddy say it's 20 bucks to go get a burger, fries, and a shake. That's incredible, $20. The Crichtons look uh, awesome, but they're quite expensive, quite large for a desktop. Yeah, look at the Tories. I thought the Tories were very punchy. Uh, Randy, how do you clean a vintage amp's volume control to reduce that static noise? Um, you can tell I do this for a living. Deox it. Um, so you can get this sprayed in there. Shh, shh, shh. And you want to get into the pot. I mean, you can do it like just kind of going around the pot, but if you can get inside and spray it into the actual pot and then just kind of work it in and out, usually it takes care of it. Agreed on in and out fries are terrible. My goodness, we have missed a lot of comments. <laughs> have you tried to get yeah, lower horn? Yes. Yes, I have. Incident, yes. Ah, oh, Fuddruckers. I love Fuddruckers. I would still, though, like personally speaking, I would still choose an In N Out or a Whataburger over Fuddruckers. I cannot believe how many comments I've missed. Great food, great music, and great speakers. Yeah, that should be like, you should start a channel. You should talk about cheeseburgers and food. Never heard of Chick fil A. Yeah, it's down here. Popeyes for the win. Hey, you know what? Here's an important question. Is Long John Silver still a thing? Because I used to go there all the time. Now, granted, all their food tastes identical. Like, regardless of what you get, it tastes like the same thing. But I remember in college, we went to Long John's all the time. Is that still a thing in the Midwest? What do I think about it? Man, there's a lot of questions about the yaw. Yeah. yeah? Lar horn. I like it. I got to do some A-B testing, though. Fuddruckers sounds like profanity to me. Me, too. I feel weird saying it. Uh, Long John... Hold on. Long John Silver's combined with Taco Bell here in Oregon, fish and tacos. KFC's combined with some um, Taco Bells. Um, Long John's is closing all over the place here. Back then, it was great. Today, it sucks. Oh, man, I miss Long John Silvers, right? And they quietly went away. Like, they just kind of vaporized, evaporated. Now I want some Long Johns. All right. I haven't seen Long Johns in over a decade. Still here in Ohio. Still in Louisville. Uh would you recommend the newest Sabaj Class D or the SMSL Class D? Thanks. Um, I think Sabaj does a better job. SMSL, I think, is great for DAX and headphone amps. Their speaker amps just haven't been as good. I don't know which Sabaj you're talking about, though, because Sabaj is a bunch of Class Ds. Um, and the funny thing is Sabaj and SMSL, I think, are the same company. Or they're made out of the same building. Have an older integrated DAC, uh, amp with a DAC, Sabre 9018. Any chance the DAX you review would provide a noticeable sound improvement? Um, they could. Um, I definitely think the J2, the AKM version, J2 from Gishelli Labs, is the wrong way. Probably, right there, probably going to have a noticeable difference. Now, 9018 is actually the DAX chip that's in the uh, Modi Plus. So I think you would with the J2. I think you would with something like the Denifreps Aries 2. I also think you would with the topping E50. So yes, I do. It's not always about the chip though. 
It's also the analog output stage. So, but I still think you would. Uh, we need a rating system on the audio equipment that is based on cheese. Oh, Jeff, what a great idea. So great, in fact, that I'm writing this one down. All right. I'm going to give you credit, Jeff Caldwell. Yep. No, Caudill. Caudill. All right. So we're going to have cheese burger rating system for hi-fi equipment. Well done, Jeff. Hit me with some Long John Silver's Hush Puppies. Man, I could eat a dozen of them. And they're... Uh, they're... Um, I want to say soy sauce. I know it's the tartar sauce. I would just, and I remember they had these like little tiny paper cups and they would have this container of tartar sauce and it would just be like, and you could spray tartar sauce. And whatever reason, it was like the size of a thimble and I'd have to get like 35 of these things and they're paper. So if you left the tartar sauce in there for longer than, I don't know, 30 seconds it started to kind of just get all gross and stuff and so by the end i was just smashing the paper cup of tartar sauce and then i got savvy to it i'm just like just dump it onto the tray so dump it onto the yeah that's what i need at home it's one of those things of tartar sauce yep all right i think the last l long john silver just left us in new york no expensive, but any plans to review uh, Andrew Jones speaker? You know, I talked to MoFi about that, and I thought they were going to send me some. Um, I'll put it to you this way. I'm like not in, in a hurry. I would love to because I'm personally curious what they sound like here. I don't know how well that fits into the channel, but personally, I would love to have them. I've heard them at a show, but I haven't heard them in my house. Uh, Yalar Horn is currently in my cart right now. Um, I'll put it this way. I don't think you're going to be disappointed in 10 Watts and I've got them bridge. So, or running in mono. So, um, 20 Watts goes farther than you think it does. Super duper is amazing. Uh, long John silver is one of the last, one of the few fast food places where you can get a beer. Huh? Interesting. Uh, they are owned by the same company. I wonder if you're talking about Sabaj and SMSL. Um, all right. I <laughs> love it when people say Long John Silver is terrible. I love it when people have like super strong opinions about things. All right. We've gone over and I'm going to hit some super chats. Too many choices. Uh, 1K. LCR bookshelf for music and movies. I have dual eight inch subs, medium room, and back to food. LOL. Um, look at uh, uh, RSL. They have some really good stuff. RSL is really impressive, impressive, especially for home theater. Still good for music, but for home theater, it's very good. Uh, and they have an MTM, so you can get the same three speakers for, for all of them. All right. I think we're going to end it with that. I am sorry I didn't get to everybody, and there is a ton of comments that I didn't get to. But um, this was a fun one. I enjoyed talking about burgers, but I have – we got to go see a man about a horse. So it's really code for, I got to take my kid to an appointment. So uh, I love y'all. Thank you. 170,000 subscribers. Thank you to everybody that uh, watches. Um, um, if you think one of your friends would benefit from watching this channel, share it out, share it on Facebook or I don't know, forums things like that i hope you have a great week we're gonna have a lot more content coming out so uh i love you all have a great week uh happy wednesday and thank you so much for joining me in talking about cheeseburgers bye 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 bye